It is said that polite women rarely make history. Imagine what it would be like to live around 1900 when girls were expected to be perfect, little ladies, and young women's only option was to be a wife. Girls today might find it a little restricting as a young woman, Juliet Gordon Lowe, gave and attended many parties. And here it was, and also in England. Then in her 50s, she started to do something and wanted to be useful. Eventually, she discovered scouting and began challenging girls to find their talents. She made history by founding the Girl Scouts of America. It is 1920. Mrs. Juliet Lowe, better known as Daisy, played by actor-playwright Kate Carney, has had a revelation when she challenged girls to do things no one thought girls could or should do. She discovered the real meaning of her life. Sometimes some of the girls ask me why I am called Daisy. Well, when I was a baby, I had a grandfather who took one look at me and he said, she's going to be a daisy. <laughs> so that's what they call me ever since. People do, except for my sisters, of course. Sometimes they call me things like crazy daisy. That's because I've been through a lot of phases. And the phases, well, they kept going. And then it, I was middle-aged and I found out about the Girl Scouts. And my sisters thought that it was just another phase, so they called it girl scooting. <laughs> Little did they know how much I cared about doing something really useful. Oh my goodness, you girls are all wearing long pants. Well, where are your skirts? Why aren't you wearing skirts? When I was a girl, we had to wear dresses and behave like perfect little ladies so that we would grow up into perfect young ladies who a man would want to marry. Oh, but I see what you're doing. You're, the reason you're wearing those pants is because you're, cow, you're tomboys. <laughs> well, I was one too. I climbed trees. I caught frogs. And I stood on my head with my skirt tucked carefully between my knees. But then I had to start taking lessons in social graces. And then the parties started. And they went on and on. Somewhere over the years, sometimes I would hear a voice in, within me saying, when are you going to do something useful? I didn't know how to do anything useful. I didn't really know even where to start looking. So it was years before I found, I met this gentleman. He was a fine English war hero. Sir Robert Baden Powell was his name. And he was taking groups of boys on hikes. And he was teaching them about nature so that they could survive in the wilderness. And I said, oh, Sir Robert, that is a wonderful thing. But why is it just for boys? Girls would love such training, too. And he said, I know. And so that's why we've started the Girl Guides. And the girls do almost all the same things as the boys do, such as um, explore the outdoors and help others. <gasps> explore the outdoors. Oh, I had been exploring the outdoors every summer from the time I was five until I was 15 with my cousins and cousins and brothers and sisters. There were about 20 of us on my aunt's farm up in North Georgia. It was like going to camp. And there's always somebody at a camp or on a farm who needs help. For example, one summer I saw that the shirts that belonged to the farm workers' sons were getting kind of worn out. They were really faded. And I told my girl cousins that we should sew new ones for them. 
and none of us knew how to sew, but I had seen a left-handed lady sew once, and so I taught everybody, and then we started working, and it's slow going. We, call, we co formed a sewing club and called ourselves the Helpful Hands. And as I said, it's slow going, sewing left-handed, but we had them ready in time for the baseball game with our boy cousins. And the boys wore their shirts, and every time they stood up to swing at the bat, you could hear, <coughs> because something was tearing. And then we saw that the shirts were disappearing or b missing pieces of cloth. And then as they ran, there would be pieces of cloth floating along behind them. And the field was soon filled with chunks and scraps of red and white checked tablecloths. <laughs> and afterwards, my brother came up to us and said, well, you could maybe change your name to the helpless hands. <laughs> but I would really like to talk about girls in the outdoors. Because, well, so many times when I was a girl, they would say, girls just cannot go into the woods because they don't, they're delicate and frail, and they would not know, they wouldn't be able to survive in the wilderness. But my grandpa Kinsey told us stories about how all the women in our family had been forced to learn how to rough it and that they could handle any situation. For example, his mother, Eleanor Little was her name, and she was nine years old when she was captured by the Seneca Indians. And so for four years, she ate their food and wore the clothes of an Indian princess and spoke the Seneca language. And for those same four years, her parents kept sending messages to Chief Cornplanter asking, could they please see their daughter? And finally, he allowed as they could have one visit. Ineska's canoe scooted up onto the shores of Lake Erie. She hopped out of the canoe and ran to her mother, and the two of them stood there hugging for a moment as Cornplanter looked at them and said, the child must have her mother. I will go back alone. And he paddled away, and she never saw him again. But she spoke of him with affection for the rest of her life. You see, I think girls really love the wilderness. Now, I had one link with the wilderness in that I had a hunting lodge up in the Scottish Highlands. So as soon as I could get up there, I started a girl guide troop. And those girls walked miles over these huge hills every Saturday because they were learning so much. Because we were teaching them things like how to build a fire and cooking outdoors and giving first aid. Oh, I felt that this was a perfectly wonderful thing to do. I felt like we were a success, and I could not wait to get back to Savannah, Georgia, my hometown. And so it was 1912 when I got back to Savannah, and I called up my cousin Nina, who was the president, no, she was the principal of a girls' school, and I said, Nina, I want you to come right over here. I have something wonderful for the girls of Savannah and all America, and we are going to start it tonight. Well, those girls were not as interested as I thought they'd be until they found out that the, girl, that the girls and the girl guides played sports. And those girls wanted to be stronger and more confident. So they were very happy. Very, they got very interested. But their parents said that they could not do physical activity. It wasn't ladylike. And I thought, oh, well, that's just because the parents are afraid they'll become tomboys. So I said to the girls, we will get ourselves our playing field, and then let's see what your folks say. And uh, 
So there were, what, 18 girls. And it was March 12th, 1912, when these 18 girls gathered in Savannah and we started the first girl guide meeting in America. But their parents were still saying no physical activity. And I thought I had better have a meeting with them. And so I called them together and I said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming. You know me as a proper lady of Savannah, but you may not know that as a child, I was a tomboy. And I see myself as living proof that tomboys can grow into sober ladies of Savannah. And they all seemed to hear that. And so I said, so let me ask you a few questions. What is the harm in girls going on hikes to study nature? Oh, there were no objections. So um, what about girls helping elders? Mm-hmm. Oh, what about girls doing dancers' warm-ups? Aha, uh -huh. a couple of objections. Very well, will you all stand with me and we will do a little experiment. It's one, two, three, four, 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 and one, two, three, four. Now you can see how girls would become more graceful if they did exercises like that, can't you? Thank you, I thought you'd see that. So now I will we'll continue. What is the harm in girls helping poor families? <sighs> well, and what about playing base basketball? Basketball, they all shouted. Basketball, girls would have to wear bloomers. And bloomers only come to their knees, and people would see their legs. Oh, that is not at all ladylike. And I was going, I thought, what? Oh, I said, well, I said, you wait, you must wait and see this field when we get it, because we're going to build a fence all the way around it, and then we're going to hang canvas curtains all the way so the field can be completely enclosed. So now, when Savannah Girl Scouts want to play basketball, they go to headquarters and they put on their white midi blouses and their pumpkin-shaped black bloomers and then they put on these black coats, cotton coats that I had made for them that button all the way to the floor and then they dash across the street and they pull the canvas curtains closed all the way around the field and they take off their coats and they play basketball to their heart's content. <laughs> and no one will ever see their legs, and their reputations as good girls will be safe. 